What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a new and improved build for The Witcher 3. So, if you know anything about my channel at all, um, the most watched video on my channel is actually a signs build for The Witcher 3 that I made uh, several years ago now, in fact, actually, before the uh, DLCs were actually out, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so with that in mind, I was actually going through and finally getting around to uh, platinum, platinum uh, if you want to call it that, uh, for me, just getting all the achievements on PC, um, for The Witcher 3 while I was on vacation from work. And it occurred to me that it was probably time to like revisit that build since uh, and kind of basically take some of the criticism that I received for it, uh, since you know I was actually still kind of new to the whole YouTube thing in general at that time. and kind of update it uh, and go through all of that stuff with you. So uh, basically the idea of this, and again, drawing on some of the criticism that that sign build received was to effectively use signs, potions, and fast attacks. So jumping just straight into it, uh, what we need from the general skills is Griffin School Techniques, because this being a signs build, we are actually going to use um, the Griffin School gear. Uh, it's medium gear, so it has a pretty good uh, defense rating um, and armor and all that, but most importantly, it's going to give us a lot of sign intensity, uh, which is great for later on, which I'll show you guys uh, specifically why sign intensity is probably the most important stat we have, um, but we don't want to go overkill stacking it either, because we are going to be using some attack power stuff. So, uh, pick up Griffin School Techniques, uh, again, because we will be using the Griffin School Armor. And then second from general, we want to pick up Rage Management. This lets us use our adrenaline points to cast signs, which is just very helpful in general. Uh, one of, like, honestly, this is probably the most useful of all the general abilities. Um, from there, we actually, if you're leveling up, uh, kind of keep that in mind, uh, the first thing we want to pick up is muscle memory, which is going to give us basically just extra fast attack damage. Um, then we want to focus on getting precise blows. Undying is incredibly useful, uh, especially on Death March. And then crippling strikes. Those are the most important, but because of the way they uh, time, like, you know, not exactly time gate, but uh, ability point gate all of these lower tier abilities, um, you're going to wind up having to pick up things. So I recommend arrow deflection, lightning reflexes, and fleet-footed and whirl. Um, there's going to be certain points in time where it's just easier to swap these abilities out to help you do certain things. Um, so right off the bat, that'll be your first probably 10 levels. You want to put Griffin School Techniques up here, Rage Management, Muscle Memory, and then a Greater Red Mutagen in here to get the extra attack power off of your Muscle Memory from the combat ability. That's where I would start. Uh, and then that brings us over to our second tier of abilities that unlock. Um, you want to put uh, Undying, Crippling Strikes, and then Precise Blows over here. So what all these actually do, uh, Muscle Memory of course I already mentioned, uh, gives you fast attack damage. Precise Blows will actually uh, increase our crit chance with fast attacks by 10% plus increasing our critical damage by 75%. Um, Undying literally gives you, uh, you know, once vitality reaches zero, uh, you will be restored to 100% of your uh, vitality. And you have to have an adrenaline point to use it, but basically it just gives you a second life bar. Um, which actually, this is a weird side note, but that actually also works in the fist fighting matches, which is very helpful. Um, then we come down to crippling strikes. Our fast attacks apply a bleed effect. This is awesome. Um, this is just incredibly helpful. As long as you hit something, you'll be doing damage to everything. Now, uh, that is it for our first and second tier of abilities. Now, after that, and the way I actually recommend doing this, by the way, just because leveling up can be kind of slow, use your level up ability points on the combat tree here, and then start putting your uh, place of power ability points that you get from activating places of power into alchemy. Because for our third tier, what we're going to pick up is Heightened Tolerance, which increases, uh, basically this makes it at a max level, it removes the toxicity from using too many potions. So if your toxicity level hits like 90, you won't take any damage from it being so high. Then we're also going to pick up Acquired Tolerance, uh, which means it basically just makes our toxicity go up by all of the amount of formulas we know. Um, this is going to let us just down potions left and right, uh, which is 
basically mandatory on death march you're going to want to be drinking a lot of potions to help you in every situation so this is basically a must have and then we are going to have refreshment uh, which means every potion we take will heal us for 25 percent at max level um, so literally every potion besides swallow and white rapids which are actually healing potions every potion will immediately heal you for 25 percent um, that's what we're going to put in our third box here, and then we are going to pick up a greater green mutagen for uh, extra vitality, just because that's what's in the tree and that's the most useful thing to put there. Um, the actual vitality bonus itself is whatever. Um, but that is it, and you will not waste a single point in that tree because all of those things, you won't, you, know, you won't have to get down to these lower tiers which require more, so you can spend literally these exact amount of points in this tree. And that brings us to our last tier, which is actually where we start putting in the work on the signs. Now, because of the way the leveling works, this will actually be a little later um, in the standard game, unless you're like doing literally every single thing. You're probably gonna be like, I think, I think the unlock on one of these is like level 26 or something like that. But uh, what we're actually gonna pick up here, and you have to be a little careful with this, uh, but start with Melt Armor, because you're gonna be using Igni a lot at the beginning of the game. Um, this will reduce things armor by 75% scaling off your sign intensity, but up to a maximum of 75%. So basically we'll hit things, we'll melt our armor, and then our fast attack, which is already upgraded to do more damage, will be doing even more damage. So Igni's great, uh, always use that one. Um, Delusion is awesome, uh, but that's mostly just for like the role playing stuff. It uh, just helps you get through conversations easier and saves you some legwork. Uh, so what I actually recommend using is Melt Armor, Sustained Glyphs for uh, the Yurden sign, which will actually give you two traps, which is just incredibly useful in general. And then either use Puppet or Delusion, and that'll actually fill up this up. Right now I have Delusion because I was using it for something specific, but Puppet is awesome because it's the alternate sign mode, in which case you can turn monsters into allies who deal more damage. Now, this is a little on the difficult side to pull off against large groups because this does have a small cast time, uh, which isn't actually stated. And one other thing I want to mention is that even in this fully patched, uh, upgraded version of the game, you cannot use Delusion and Puppet at the same time. Not because you're not supposed to be able to, you are, it's actually a bug. These two are mutually exclusive because a bug prevents both of them from working. So, uh, Sustain Glyphs, Melt Armor, uh, puppet or delusion. Those are the two most. Those are the most important. You should always have those slotted. Now that brings us to our mutagens from Blood and Wine. So, Blood and Wine, uh, the DLC added extra mutagens, which is this middle thing here. This won't be here until you actually get that far in the game. So once you hit Blood and Wine and you actually do the quest to unlock this, we come to our extra mutagen slots. Now, if you're unaware. Uh, these require ability points as well as greater mutagens to unlock, which means this is a very late game thing. Uh, you will not be able to unlock all of these without new game plusing. You just won't. There isn't, like, there isn't enough ability points to do so. So, um, that said, the only one I actually recommend using for this particular build is Piercing Cold, which turns Ard into a knockdown to being able to uh, freeze opponents as well as knock them down. Opponents that are knocked down and frozen simultaneously immediately die, which is hilarious. I'll show you some footage uh, if you haven't already seen it playing in the background. It's hilarious. I love this ability. Um, for the most part, up until you get this, you're going to be using uh, Igni, and with all the extra sign intensity, it'll burn things. Uh, things that are burning or on, currently on fire are stunned. They will not move and attack you as long as you don't hit them. As soon as you hit a burning target, the stun goes away, as is the case with most uh, most status effects. The only exception to that is poisoning. If you poison something, uh, it continues to be poisoned even after you hit it. However, uh, immobilized, um, burning, all that stuff, as soon as you hit those targets, that effect goes away. Now, another one you can use for this build uh, is actually Adrenaline Rush, but honestly, I don't recommend it. Piercing Cold because of the instant kills is amazing. So, fully decked out, you're gonna have all Grandmaster Griffin School gear. You're going to have uh, all of those abilities that I mentioned. And as you can see, that puts your sign intensity at 143%. 
which gives Ard 115% chance to stagger, Igni 100% chance to uh, set things on fire, provided they're, they're you know, pre-resistance. Uh, Some things still won't go through because they have resistance to burning. Um, but this gets you where you need to be and does some actual fire damage from the initial hit as well. Uh, Yirden will put you at a 33% slowdown. And Quinn will actually have about 500 physical damage reduction, but honestly that's a pretty much a one-off anyway for most of the time when you're using Quinn with this build. So, uh, so that is pretty much it as far as actually getting skills and the appropriate gear goes. Uh, focus entirely on the Griffin School for all of your Witcher gear, and then the skills, as I already mentioned, are what they are. Now, in the background, you'll of course see R doing all that hilariously instant kill stuff, um, which our sign intensity, which uh, the Griffin School techniques adds to, uh, helps us do pull off. So the 25% chance is uh, flat on the freezing damage, but uh, it does help us set things on uh, fire with Igni and knock things down with Ard, uh, which honestly just makes the game pretty easy. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. I finally got around to updating this build and responding to the feedback. Oh, one more thing I want to mention, actually, real quick while I'm thinking about it. For the most part, the rune words from the Hearts of Stone DLC, I almost forgot to mention it. Honestly, most of them are useless, just straight up. The only one I think is cool is for your main chess piece. It is called Possession. It is level 3. And the reason I think that this honestly isn't worth the effort to get is that you have to spend 30,000 gold to upgrade the Rune Word guy to the point that you can get this. But this is the only one I like to use. Possession, when an opponent influenced by Axie dies, the effect uh, actually transfers to a nearby target as well as increases the duration by two seconds for each blow the affected target lands. So obviously this pairs incredibly well with Puppet and is the only one of those rune words I uh, actually recommend getting because of the exorbitant cost of actually getting it. So um, there you go guys, uh, that is my updated build that I actually made a few years ago uh, responding to some of the feedback I got at the time while I was uh, busy actually getting all of the achievements here. Uh, I hope you like it, so uh, if you do, let me know. But either way, hope you have a great day and stick around and subscribe. Thank you.